Hey guys, so for this video I want to show you how to make a pulled handle from a tapered coil for our pitcher. Um, so the first question you might ask is, how much clay do I need? Uh, so what I like to do is cut what I think I'll need off the block, right? If I've got my block and I just kind of take a corner, um, I'll have like a long rectangle. And then you can just kind of pinch that out, right? Like this, just to see if you're kind of in the neighborhood, right? Oh, plenty of clay. So that's pretty easy. That's an easy way to know if you're kind of close to how much material you'll need. Um, so, I'm just gonna wet my hands a little bit and begin by rolling a coil. So, rolling a coil is kind of tricky, so I just want to kind of go over that with you guys a little bit. I'm actually working in porcelain. I'm gonna roll my coil on a plaster, a big plaster bath. It's not totally necessary. You could work on um, drywall. Um, Sometimes with porcelain, I'll actually work on a, a non-porous surface. Just depends on kind of what I'm doing, but this is plaster. And I've moistened this a little bit so it's not drawing so much water. Um, okay, so I've just pinched this out into kind of a log. Now, the first thing to know about making a coil is hand position. So I'm gonna take my right hand, I'm going to bring my fingers all tight together so they're touching one another. I'm gonna flex my fingers back like the, uh, the motion would be like trying to touch your fingers here to like your forearm, like you're trying to flex back, right? And that'll kind of give your hand like a bit of a curve. So that's the first uh, thing to know. The second thing to know is you want the heel of your hand more or less always in contact with this surface. And you're gonna be only applying pressure on the back stroke. That's really important. If you try and roll coils pushing forward, like, I've seen it done, but it is very difficult. I've never had any success with that, so a pressure on the backstroke, I think, is best. So, it looks like this. I'm going to just roll forward, just to get some table space. I'm going to apply pressure from the heel of my right hand up to about, oh, just till where my pinky ends, maybe. That'll be like the surface I'm working with. And since I want this coil to be tapered, I need to apply a little bit more pressure with the right hand edge of my right hand, right? So that the coil is tapered like that. Now remember, this is round, so when you go to flatten this out, it's gonna get wider. So you need to kind of um, draw out enough material into the length of the handle so that when you flatten it, it won't get too wide at the widest point. So that's a fairly continuous taper now. And somewhere in the middle is probably the part that I'll end up using. Um, but I like to have kind of like plenty to work with, right? Just in case things go funny or um, I want to make just changes on the fly, things like that. So um, now I'm just going to uh, pound this down against the nice sturdy bat. So um, some tables work better than others for this kind of hand building. Like if the table, if you hit the table and it just bounces, it's really not gonna do this job real well. This bat is like, you know, an inch of solid plaster. It's thick, it's heavy, the clay just hits it and deforms the, because the bat doesn't give it all. That's kind of what you're looking for in a work surface. Now I flip it over. It's really important when you flip it over to make sure that this surface is level when you drop it. Otherwise you're gonna end up with a t uh, um, like a cant to one surface. And just gently and repeatedly drop that coil. Okay. So uh, when you're thinking about what shape you want the handle to be, and by what shape, I mean like what is the cross section of the handle. Um, one thing to keep in mind is like, what is the line of the pot, right? So the way that this handle is on this piece, um, which is our example for this project, it's one edge. There's not like a square cut edge with two lines. 
there's a single edge which meets up with this edge here, this line, and then it comes up and it wraps around and just disappears into the like silhouette or profile of the piece. So that's kind of how that works. Um, if it had two edges, both of those edges would like need to go somewhere as far as I'm concerned. I think that's a important consideration is like, what are all the edges doing? So um, that's how I account for them in this piece. So, um, so here right now, we basically have two edges, right? We've got like this edge and this edge and the way that that'll affect the profile, it'll be pretty blocky looking. So we're gonna remove one of them by tamping it down. The other thing I like to do is just kind of toss this a little bit and it'll just give it, um, a little, it'll stretch it a little bit and thin it a little bit. Um, so you can see now I've got a flat interior and like, so this part, the like the bat, the outside of the handle or the overall cross section is flat and then a curve. And I like those, um, I like that combination. So I'm not gonna do like a ton of pulling here, just a little bit. Obviously this handle's quite large. We're gonna remove a lot of it. Um, but I like to do this. I like to work larger than the form um, with the handle so I can take the good part. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna wet this a little bit just by wetting my hand. And <clears throat> what we're gonna try and do is just get some water on here and then just smooth everything out. So I'm gonna use my thumb to taper the edges like this, just pushing down. And then like you're pushing with your thumb, so you need some counter pressure. So that counter pressure is being provided by my first two fingers. Now I'm gonna turn it over like this and just make sure that I kind of reinforce that edge on the back side like that. So I've got a nice curve across this face and on the back, it's fairly flat. I mean, it's not sharp or anything at the edges, but it's like flat. It's also not concave here. It's quite flat. That's important, I think. So it's pulled in, a, in some regards, like it's pulled just to kind of refine the form, but most of the shaping is really done uh, during the kind of coil forming part of the process. Okay, last step is I'm gonna take a sheet metal rib like this and just run over the outside surface of the handle. And what that will do is compress the surface, even it out, and also leave a ridge where the rib kind of moves away from the clay. So I'll do it on two sides and then we'll get like a nice little line running down the center. So next step here is I'm just going to cut a little oversized, but I'm just gonna make a cut and kind of get the handle up and, and set it next to the piece and just sort of see where we're at. So one important thing is to um, how you make these cuts, right? So we want this cut to be at this angle and that will be where the handle will meet um, the curve of the pitcher. And then we actually want this cut to be at the same angle Right? It's sort of like doing molding or something. You have to make this cut and we're gonna get rid of this piece, but we'll make the same type of cut here, but we'll get rid of the other piece. So we'll be left with like the same angle on two different surfaces. So I'm just gonna make a cut. Make sure that this cut is perpendicular to the center line of your handle, or you'll end up with a handle that wants to fit the pot kind of crooked. So that's important. So, you want to just roll this edge in gently. Um, the cut edge, I find that that helps. It's like a nice way to get a refined edge um, because this is where the handle will meet the piece, so it's kind of an important spot. Uh, so you just want to like take care of any funny stuff um, right off the bat. 
So I'm just rolling this edge in, and then I'm just going to start to work a curve into this top of the handle here. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we're going to find the center line of this picture in a few minutes, but right now I'm just kind of getting this handle situated, so um, I want to kind of just press it up against the piece. The piece is not leather hard, but it's firmed up. I can handle it without the wall deforming. Um, <clears throat> and I think that's probably a good time to attach handles for porcelain. For stoneware, it's a lot more forgiving and you can kind of do whatever you want um, as far as like up to leather hard. Uh, okay, so you can see that the handle meets the pot right here, actually below the rim line. Um, but we have like a straight line and then we have a curve and we have to make those two surfaces meet. So, you know, like one thing you can do is make this cut as a curve. No matter how many times I try that, it doesn't work that well. So I don't do it that way anymore. I make a straight cut and then I like press the center in. <clears throat> so that what I end up with is a handle that has a curve but hasn't lost any material. That seems to work really well. So now it's like pretty much going to fit just fine. Now our handle's a little bit too long, so we'll be removing some. But I just want to talk about like form for a minute. So if you take a look at this picture, one reason I really like this shape, this um, concave form, is because it gives a place for the hand, and it gives a place for the handle to kind of fill. Right? Like when you have a big volume and then a handle moving way off that volume, first of all, it uh, kind of gives the pot a lot of leverage over your hand so that when you fill this thing with, you know, when you fill a, a, pot, a pitcher like that with water, it tends to make the pitcher drop on you. This type of design where the handle is really, really close to the form gives you a lot of leverage over that volume of liquid. So it works really well. Um, Visually, it also is kind of really nice because it's a continuation of this line and then a continuation of this line down here. So it's like this volume continues up as the handle wraps around and kind of completes this negative space here. That's, I think, why it works visually so well, at least it does to my eye. So filling this spot. So it's like when you're making pots that have handles, if you can include some negative space in the form for the handle, you're going to end up with a really nice pot. Okay, so I'm just going to hold this where I'll be attaching. I'm going to make a little mark with my thumbnail where I want to cut. And I'm just going to remove that extra material. Like that. Okay, so just take take notice. No, this handle is not like out here, you know? It's really tight to the pot, and there's still plenty of room for my hand. I think that works really well visually. Um, okay, so now we need to figure out like where on the pot we can attach this handle. Okay, so I hope you can see, I have a laser line projected on this pot right now. I'm using just a hardware store variety um, laser level. The uh, laser level that I use will be listed in our tool list. Um, but what I'm using this for is to create a vertical line that runs from the center of the spout here uh, and then like to the rim and to this straight line here. So it gives you a way to make sure that you've oriented your spout and your handle really, really um, uh, directly across from one another. It's very easy to set them off slightly and end up with um, an unfortunate situation. I've done it many times. No matter how careful, it's really can be quite tricky. So I'm just going to trace this line, you know, just enough to sort of where the handle will be attached. Like that. Okay, so now I've got a line that perfectly bisects the pot. Um, so that will give me a great way to attach the handle. <clears throat> so using a laser level is not absolutely necessary. Um, I use one for decorating all the time, so I have one. They're not expensive to buy, and I find it really helpful for stuff like this. So yeah, of course it's like kind of overkill, but honestly I find it makes a difference in my own work.
Okay. So I've got the center line on my handle lined up with my two laser level marks. And I'm just going to trace my handle just gently so I know where to score. Okay, so I'm going to use one of these little scoring tools with the five wires that I like so much. And I'm just going to score these two surfaces, um, both on the pot and on the handle. Sometimes I actually do this with um, just a toothbrush, but I feel like it's a little marginal. So, <laughs> but it works for me, but I'm not sure I recommend it for everyone. Um, okay, so score my handle as well. So I'm going to use um, some stick-up slip that I made. Um, and if you would like to make your own stick-up slip, uh, there's a recipe for all of my $10 patrons um, on Patreon um, that I hope you try out, because it's really amazing stuff. It's basically a recipe for a low shrinkage slip. Most cracking comes from shrinkage, so if you can make a slip that won't shrink much but acts like a liquid, you'd be in really good shape for attachments. Okay, so take my slip, which is quite thick. Um, you don't have to make it this thick, but... Uh, I only suggest um, slipping one surface. I think two, slipping two surfaces is too much. It tends to... Um, the handle tends to slide off the pot. <laughs> it's like too much going on. So, um, so just one slipped and one slipped surface, two scored surfaces. Okay, so again, I'm just going to line up my mark, and I'm working my way across the handle, sort of pinching inside the pot really gently, and uh, between the pot and the back of the handle, like with my thumb and my middle finger. So what you're trying to do here is basically um, cause the scoring marks to be filled with the slip that we applied. So that takes some doing. You have to like really work back and forth over that surface several times applying pressure. Then this handle will just be kind of ready to drop right into position. The lower attachment is always easier. You know, assuming the top one's holding okay, which it is. That's why I like to use the thicker slip. Thicker slip tends to um, be less likely to allow any sliding to happen. It tends to hold the handle right where you put it. It's like glue. So, one thing I would suggest is taking a careful look at this line. And is that line continuous? And does it wrap from this inside curve? into the handle and down. That's kind of the thing to be on the lookout for. You know, and you can let it firm up and come back to it. Um, some people like to blend this attachment here fully, and I do sometimes. Um, I did on our example piece, you can see. There's no obvious, you can see on this piece, there's no obvious line here. So I blended it on the inside. I don't typically do that. I typically let this attachment show. Um, but whatever you do, be really mindful of this space here. This is like, um, in, this is like one of those places on, that can really make or break a pot. It's like a foot. It's gotta be kind of just right. So really pay attention to what's happening here visually. Only other thing I would recommend here is to give a little lift in this area. So pick up here and push towards the pot. And do you see how that kind of gives it this like little bit of bounce or a little bit of li uh, lift? So I'm gonna let that 
like set up for a while and then I'll just run around the attachment surfaces just with like a sharp uh, wooden tool just to seam it all. Um, but there's our picture. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed our um, concave uh, pitcher project with a pinched spout and a tapered coil pulled handle. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next series.